Nice. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> no cringe. Hashtag no cringe. Yeah, how are we gonna do that? <laughs> <laughs> so how are you? I'm good. I'm good. 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 Yeah. yeah. How are you? A uh, good. Good, considering all the circumstances, still good. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. End note is always good. Uh, how is uh, how is the immigration life? Let's start from that. <laughs> uh, that's a uh, yeah, the history of Big two bomb. life. <laughs> yeah. And uh, now it's uh, getting better, actually. In the beginning, it was a bit intense. Uh, I also moved here without knowing I would move here. Uh, I just came from for a holiday after I finished my army and my. Uh, COVID time in Israel. Uh, I arrived here for a holiday with a one-way ticket and then I realized that I can actually stay. And I did that, but I didn't know a lot of people here. So winter came and it became quite intense. Uh, but slowly, I think with time, I found my place here and it got better. Nice. A question yeah. that is probably unnecessary for most Israelis, but just necessary to anybody for anybody to understand is why Berlin? Um, I used to come here since I was 16 for holidays. Mm. Just randomly I came here for the first time and I kind of fell in love with the city. And Same. I always felt like at some point in my life I would move here. It was kind of like a far, far away dream that I didn't think will happen at some point. Um, but... Yeah, I mean, I never actually thought about any other option. It was, Did it have uh, a connection to electronic music since the very beginning or just the no, city and the No, vibe? actually not. Um, I think we were just looking for, me and my friends, we were looking for a place to go on a holiday. And a sister of one of my best friends told us, uh, we want to go actually to Barcelona mm. and to one of the islands to go party. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> And she was like, no, go to Berlin, it's kind of nicer. And yeah. in the end, maybe the flights were cheaper or something, so we decided to come here. Yeah. Uh, and of course it was about nightlife, but we were 16, so we didn't go out to the big clubs. Yeah. But we still kind of had a taste of the Berlin bars, small places, kind of the whole vibe of the city, which we really enjoyed. Nice. So you came out of the army and... Uh uh, as you said, came spontaneously, mm -hmm. decided to stay. Yeah. And um, did it answer your expectations now that you've been here for a couple of months, I would say? How, how long now? Probably uh, more, more. Yeah, more. Yeah, like yeah. a year and a half. A year and a half, well. Yeah. I was going back and forth a lot. Yes, yes. And yeah. how is the, the, the answer to the expectations? Harder That's than uh, you think? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, of course, the expectations for the city were big. Um, and it's very different to have the dreamy Berlin dream mm -hmm. and to have reality. Um, it's still an amazing city and a lot of things that I saw in the beginning I still see today, but I just think that today I can also criticize a lot you of see, the see bad things. things. Shifting. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Nice. I guess that when you talk about Israel, everybody uh, has a connotation to Tel Aviv, of course, but you're mm -hmm. not from Tel Aviv, you're from mm -hmm. Jerusalem which is a completely different universe inside the, the bubble of Israel, uh, like a bubble of its own. So uh, how do you think uh, was, the, was this transition for, for you from, the, from, the, from Jerusalem as a city to, the, to the Berlin as a city, and also, which are both capitals, by the way, but everybody considers Tel Aviv to be the capital. So how would you consider the difference from between Jerusalem and Tel Aviv first? Uh, that's a huge difference. Uh, yeah. First of all, in Jerusalem you can breathe. <laughs> which you can breathe. Is, like yeah, good air from the mountains? Yeah, or, good uh, air from the mountains, really good weather. Um, but it's like two different universes. I think Tel Aviv is this city where all everybody is kind of liberal and everybody is sharing a similar way of life. Mm. And in Jerusalem you just have so many things going on. It's like for me, I think it's one of the most chaotic places in the world. Yeah but also amazing in a way. It's, um, I mean, I was born there, so I grew up there my whole life, basically, and I never knew anything else, um, which, you know, like, I was very different. Like, I'm non-religious, my parents also, not even conservative in any way. Um, and to be in this kind of atmosphere, like, you really yeah. have to have your own bubble. Yeah. 
Uh, and I was going to a really, really nice uh, school when I was young. Um, you were underground really, before you knew you were underground. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really yeah. nice school, really nice people. Um, it's kind of like a unique uh, school, no tests, no exams, no anything. Cool. Yeah. Super liberal. It was downtown also, so we, we have a... It's very authentic. <laughs> yeah. Our neighbor is a cool yeah. guy. He's, uh, he's like uh, watching the garden, watching over no, the garden. He puts, uh, he puts old bikes uh, uh -huh. next to, the, to his windows so yeah. nobody can put the bike there. Uh -huh. And then nobody can disturb him next to his window. Sounds so uh, like a typical German the, neighbor. Yeah, yeah he's nice. an intense one. Nice. Um, good. So ha Jerusalem is a city of contrasts. Uh, a lot of mm -hmm. uh, conservative parts, a lot of also an underground going on, yeah. uh, but completely in a different uh, situation than Tel Aviv, where everybody, as you said, more or less shares the same lifestyle. Well, how was the comparison to, to Berlin? Because on one hand, in Berlin, of course, mm -hmm. everybody is liberal, kind of everybody, but yeah. you have a lot of contrasts here. Um, but not such a big contrast as, as Jerusalem. Yeah. Like I wouldn't say it's even near it. It's, yeah. uh, I think what was so amazing in Jerusalem when I started organizing events there was... <laughs> Authenticity game is strong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's part, he's part of the interview. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so yeah. I mean, the, the cool thing there was that it happens when you least expect it to happen. So You mean events? You mean parties? Yeah, the parties and the cool things. Because I think in Tel Aviv and also in Berlin, it's kind of a regular thing. People yeah. don't know to appreciate those stuff mm. because everybody is kind of living this modern way of life. Mm. Um, or at least and, aware that this is happening. Yeah, you know? yeah exactly. And yeah. in Jerusalem, you do have a community of... Uh, non-religious people, of course, you also have uh, some uh, big universities and a lot of students, but still it's not the main thing of the city. And then once a cool underground event is happening there, it's usually a big thing. Mm. It's a really big thing and it has the energy of something that I've never experienced before in any other place. Mm. I mean, I've been to big clubs, big festivals, everywhere. Jerusalem parties are the best mm. for sure. Mm. It happens every once in a while. Like usually, it's just a bunch of like. Yeah, I mean, events, uh, it has been for years. I heard that even Tiesto yeah. was uh, like discovered in uh, Oman yeah. in, in Jerusalem in those times. You know. It, yeah, it used to be a really big uh, party scene as well yeah. um, over there. But for many years, it's not anymore because yeah. people are struggling to be there. It's not an easy place to live. Yeah. Um, so everybody's moving to Tel Aviv since it's just easier to make it there. Um, and you don't have so many young people in the city anymore. So yeah. everything, like all the culture and like everything becomes smaller, way, way smaller. And it's actually getting worse with time now. Um, yeah, but during COVID, we had a really cool time for the city <laughs> to kind of grow from the inside and have... Uh, nice. I haven't been much yeah. to parties in Jerusalem, just a couple. Uh, I've experienced uh, like a year and a half ago, uh, a very nice party like more or less under the western wall and it had very mm. special vibes and this contrast uh, we also felt this contrast in in kiev where you come to a super conservative place where people yeah. from outside don't really aware are not really aware of what's happening inside it makes your gathering even more uh, special yeah you know? and i think what's special about it is that i mean the community and the people since it's smaller like people are so nice and honest and true to who they are and everything is very mixed. It's not about how you look or how you dance. And everything is more authentic. Mm -hmm. um, and you could see in those parties, Orthodox people coming. Oh, wow. And yeah, like not too many, of course, but yeah. you had some Orthodox living those uh, Hannah Montana life. <laughs> going <laughs> from, yeah. Nice, yeah. nice. And this is really cool because you would never have any, I don't know if people know, but most people in Jerusalem don't have such a connection between like the Orthodox community and the mm -hmm. uh, non-religious community. It's a very different, separate way of life. Mm. And then in those places, you kind of have this neutral ground. And I wish more Orthodox people would come check it out. Yeah. But I guess it's not part of the culture. They would allow themselves. Yeah. Uh, but it was really cool to see Orthodox, Palestinians, Jewish people, everybody just together 
under this like crazy city with so many crazy things going on but then in a party it's kind of uniting everybody mm -hmm. into yeah I have to jump even uh, further in the past. Uh, just tell me in two words, mm -hmm. what was your first encounter to electronic music? Well, what uh, took you, you know? What was the, the hook that, uh, where you were like, uh, wow, I'm interested? Um, it was here, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm trying to remember the first time that I went clubbing here. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was in Grismule, actually. Yeah. Not bad. <laughs> I don't remember who was playing. I was also, I think, like too young to even pay attention. But it's funny, I was completely sober also. It was like... Happens to the best of us. Yeah. The day after I went to about bank and I wasn't <laughs> sober anymore. <laughs> but uh <-huh. laughs> but uh, I went to Chris Mueller and I mean, in Israel I used to go out to parties, but I never really paid attention to the music. It was more about the vibe, going out with friends and I mean... It wouldn't take me for too long. Uh, and I went to Grismiola this night and I was completely sober and I enjoyed the music so much, like mm. I've never before. And I couldn't pay attention, like what exactly is the difference? What is the, cause I didn't know much about techno mm. or about different type of technos. Yeah. yeah. I guess in, in Jerusalem it was more, or in Israel it was more about low tempo, uh, softer sound, maybe more minimal or house or... Sign, um, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And in that night in Jesmule, it was more of a hard techno, faster, mm -hmm. big sound system also, which is yeah. very different. Sounds very nice there. Yeah, so... And the atmosphere of the dance floor was also, also amazing. And I remember I left that night and I kind of felt amazed and I wanted to kind of get more of that. Mm -hmm. And this is how I started to discover the Berlin techno scene and the techno scene in general, I think. Uh, and I used to come this after, after, after that I used to come here around maybe twice a year, three times a year. Also when I was in the army, this was kind of my uh, escaping. Oh, nice. uh, yeah. Cool. It's nice that you had that opportunity while serving uh, to come yeah, and visit. Yeah, I used nice. all, of my, uh, all of my days off. <laughs> Nice, nice. Yeah. And, and when do you think was this transition where you say, okay, I, I love this music, I listen to it, but mm. now I start collecting it, selecting it, and even playing it? Yeah, I mean, I think with time it just happened naturally. Not about being a DJ or playing, but I was just curious to... I'm this kind of person that nothing will interest me until something is, and then I will start getting obsessed with it. Mm. So I just started exploring and getting to know more artists, um, more generous and I, after I finished the army at some point uh, I've been offered to organize a party uh, with some like super random group they just had a date booked and they asked me if I want to join and I was also in I was always into organizing events even when I was a child um, so it was very random I said yes and then we had a missing slot so my ex-boyfriend was a Psytrance DJ and he kind of showed me how to how to mix on record box and we went to a back-to-back -back for an hour together and the feedback that we got from the crowd and the energy, it was so amazing and then at some point I think you kind of get addicted to it. Mm -hmm. um, I had a lot of time at home, it was COVID, so I just played for 16, 17 hours a day. Um, yeah, and then I just started getting booked. I didn't even expect it to happen, but nice. I felt like I'm learning as the process goes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And yeah. um, after playing uh, several completely different venues uh, in mm -hmm. Berlin, uh, how has your, your opinion changed in the last uh, year and a half that you're here? Or how would you say is the, the actual stand now of the Berlin uh, club scene? What would, you, what would you keep? What would you change maybe? That's a mm -hmm. question to think about. Because yeah. <laughs> you've um, been to completely different places now through the uh, one yeah. and a half years. I mean, there is something. You mean as a DJ, not as a raver, right? Uh, you can uh, start as a DJ and then yeah. maybe as yeah. a promoter as well. Yeah. You know, um, so as a DJ, I'm pretty satisfied with most venues, actually. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's very different from Israel also. Like the fact that you actually have a... Some technician in the venue always, an mm. artist care, and mm. 
I mean, there's something really nice about like not worrying about those stuff because I feel like there's a lot of pressure and anxiety sometimes going in the club in the beginning. Mm. And then when you know somebody is taking care of you, and especially before going on a stage. So when you know somebody is taking care of you, it kind of takes the pressure a bit down. Um, yeah, the crowd is also amazing here. I feel people are way more committed in Give a way. It. Yeah. So that's a very nice part. Um, and as a promoter, I felt like it's a bit harder. Because um, I kind of... Uh, my passion for events was coming more from this Jerusalem vibe of building a real community and growing it with time. Kind of like prove yourself and then it will grow by itself. But I feel like there is always a lot of pressure here of making everything bigger because it's really hard to find venues that are small and has good quality sound and in a good location or easy to reach people there. Um, so yeah, it, it's been a bit hard to find a venue that fits for us for a really long time. Um, yeah, and I'm really struggling. I'm still str kind of struggling with that. I don't yeah. know. There's a struggle for a lot of promoters in Berlin, yeah. even bigger ones, even the smaller yeah. ones. I feel so. like it puts, you know, those huge clubs, it's, it's amazing, but it puts so much pressure because mm. I don't want to organize parties for 1,000, 2,000 people. It's not my yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to do something way smaller and, and more intimate. Uh, and once you have to bring uh, 1,000 people to just break even, then you kind of have to make a lot of sacrifices and make a lot of decisions that you were actually not interested of making. Mm. Uh, if it means to book really, really expensive DJs mm. or put Which crazy... Which is also a risk. It doesn't give you yeah. a, a safe bet. Yeah, 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 yeah. true. Uh, or put a lot of money on uh, Instagram promotion, yeah. on graphic designing. Yes. or like Those numbers become really, really high. And... I feel like when it's me organizing it and I don't have a financial support system behind me, then it just puts too much pressure. And then you try to reach those 1,000 people and you're actually trying to reach people that you are, you're not even sure you want them to be in your party. Yeah. It's kind of losing the point. Yeah. yeah. So now I'm trying to kind of recalculate my way of doing it in a different... Cool, cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think also that uh, everything is shifting in Berlin uh, still, still mm. affected by Corona, still affected by a lot yeah, of trends. Definitely. And some events will go smaller, some events will go way bigger and then outside of the scene, mm. so to say. So yeah. interesting time, but uh, definitely, definitely a struggle, definitely challenging yeah. to, be a, to be a promoter these days. But uh, yeah, nice, nice to hear that at least as an artist you get, you get supported and uh, that the crowd uh, uh, gives you the energy mm. and the, club, uh, the clubs welcome you and so on. So yeah. uh, probably my final question, where do you see yourself in a couple of years as an artist? Yeah, that's also Where would you like question. to see yourself in a couple of years? I think for a really long time it was a huge question mark because I also didn't want I didn't know I wanted to be a DJ as well. Mm. It was kind of like, as we go, you know. Yeah. Um, and I think this question always comes to mind. Um, and at some point, I kind of believe that when life gives you something and you enjoy something, you should continue doing it. Definitely. Um, so I felt like this is the path that I chose for now at least. Uh, and I try to understand in what ways I can extend it. So um, I started studying in a Catalyst now, electronic music as well. Um, and I think in 10 years I would like to find a way to do this, to be a musician and also find myself a peaceful, balanced life together with it. Um, yeah. So performing, producing, and uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, still maintaining a healthy yeah, that's really important style of for life. Me. Yeah. Super nice. We wish you all uh, the best, and uh, we would uh, definitely like to. We're happy that we're part of your path, and uh, uh, we will be happy to be continuously there uh, for you. And we really enjoy your sound. Uh, enjoyed it a lot of times on the dance floor. Mm -hmm. And yeah, 
Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Peace and love. <laughs> yes. How did that go? <laughs> It was okay.